If you all remember back to the good old days of October 2018, the second ever chosen came alongside the Vampire Coast, and the very first thing I did in that tournament was a Morngul Vanguard rush with two Haunters. Rather than sit back with a zombie gun line and trade range fire, I did the last thing any dwarf would rightfully expect, and I ran all over their little booties in melee. Of course, the Chaos Dwarfs are here now, and though they share many similarities with their Western cousins, they have their own unique approach to warfare, and as Zatan the Black unleashes his Lamassu, we're gonna see how they stack up against those one-off strategies meant to catch you off guard. Some really cool units on display in this one, like the Granite Guard Blunder Biznitches, and the Skullcracker Locomotive Tank Train of Terror. A couple small but really important changes for Morgul's in this coming patch. Haunter's got a 150 gold price reduction, down to 1300 base, all Morngulls got Strider and Hide and Forest, and the Night Terrors lost Rampage, which makes them way more viable now. I've always had a soft spot for these units. While they certainly are not great in every matchup, I can see them being very useful in both land battle and domination to clear out points quickly, then escape back in a stalking stance. They're not so easy to shoot with that partial invisibility and 30% missile resist, so the game plan in this one really revolves around summons to pressure the rear, while the Wendigos deal the damage and tear out infantry all across the line. And when I mean, you look at the Night Terrors and what they're capable of in melee, yeah, I mean, they're can openers. If you're armored infantry and you get hit by them, you're in big trouble. They're basically hitting at 70 melee attack base. So whether it be Orc and Goblin Slaves or armored infantry, Morgul should trade well, and perhaps more importantly, send spooky scary shivers down their enemy spines. But if spooky is the theme and the strat here, then Silastra Direfin needs to lead the way, and her Spectral Knights Errants and King Crab summons are integral to keeping that Morgul rush safe and feasting. Song of Enthrallment and Tide Call can also help turn the tide. So with a few Sirenes thrown in and a bunch of Deccan mob, we've got a rush army that can cause some carnage amongst an infantry-based shooting faction. On the other side is that then the black on his Lamassu, and that will prove to be quite a good choice in this one. He brought his special armor, which gives him up to a 30% ward save as he takes damage, and Lamassu have bounce spells, the Withering and Enfeebling Foe, so he's essentially a spellcaster for this battle. When something becomes isolated, like a Morngul Haunter, he can go in, net it with his Sadistic Snare, and then really start going to town. Most importantly though, it has magic attacks, which are great for ethereal units, and strips magic away from attackers. Below him are the Granite Guard Blunderby. They're essentially bronze-clad Infernal Guard variants of the Chaos Dwarf Blunderbusses, and they can dig in to give them Missile Resist, Expert Charge Defense, and Extra Range. 40% Extra Range, which is pretty impactful. And here we have a Demon Smith Sorcerer with the Spell Rot Scepter, Cascading Fire Cloak, Flaming Sword of Ruin, and Fireball for sniping out any Spectral Lords like Silastra Direfin. Flaming Sword of Ruin in particular could be very impactful here, giving more flaming damage and magic attacks for the rest of his army. Behind the battle lines, of course, a couple more Chaos Dwarf Blunderbusses for that ranged firepower, and a big front line of Slaves. Chugging along quietly as it can to the tree line is the Hellbound Skullcracker, and this is essentially a melee chariot combines a tank, a train, and all kinds of demon forge metal to run over you in melee. I don't think it's been overly impressive in the battles I've th seen thus far, but it's also not very expensive. It's like 1250, 1200, so it's pretty easy to field, and it does give you some relatively cheap terror and options for running over enemies. Of course, do remember that many of these battles were fought in the first couple days of getting access, so we're still trying things out here, figuring what works against the Chaos Dwarfs and what works for them. One thing I did neglect to mention, though, was that I brought two cannons to snipe out any bull centaur renders that might threaten my monsters. Bull centaurs with great weapons would potentially be devastating to a Morngul rush, so you need an ace in the hole to whittle them down and make them easier to manage. Two cannons would have accomplished that, but there are no bull centaurs in this battle, perhaps for that very reason, as Fireball goes through my Sirenes and kills four or five of their number, in this build roulette, we realize, okay, Carronades will have nothing noteworthy to shoot at. So perhaps already a slight advantage for the Chaos Dwarfs. Lamasu can easily dodge those cannon shots or hide behind trees. Skullcrackers in the forest on the downslope. So for now, Granite Guard and Blunderbuss are the only option to shoot at, and they don't care too much about cannon fire. Zatan also has his Chaos Rune Shield, the Black Obsidian Axe, and that damage negation, that Sorceress Miasma from his Lamasu, so anytime he gets close to Sirenes, 
they can't cut through physical resist, but that's not crazy impactful for the Dawizar, because they don't have a lot of physical resist reliant units on their roster. Now, the important thing with a strat like this one is that it plays a lot like the Beastman, and that it's heavily focused on momentum. You have a couple times throughout the game, maybe, where you get a huge power spike while your summons are on the field, which means when they are active, you need to gas, 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 like initial D. The Crabs and the Damned Knights Errant are incredible tools for compromising an enemy back line. We've seen that many times in the past, especially when it's dwarfs and they can't run away, but they disintegrate not long after touching down, both the, summon both the summons do. So while that happens, the Morgals need to rip and tear as much as possible, as fast as possible. Good thing for them is they took essentially zero damage on the way in, and while Blunderbuss can put the hurt on them, even through their 30% missile resist, they only have 90 range, and Haunters and Night Terrors specialize in bulldozing through infantry-based builds, which means once the routing has started, Blunderbuss might have one volley before they are overrun. So as they shoot in here, well, these orc laborers simply can't hold the line for very long. They're not designed to, but once those are compromised, the crabs can push through, Silastra can push through with her Song of Enthrallment. She can drop another summon with the Knights Errant. They're into the back line, and immediately the cohesion of this Chaos Core force is in disarray. So as you'd expect, the opening stages here are going to completely catch the Chaos Dwarfs off guard, because I highly doubt they were expecting a Morgul Rush. It's just not something you see very often. Ferocity of the build, when supported by those additional summons, is enough to put a lot of factions on the back foot initially. But the build's kind of a ticking time bomb, right? It has very little in the way of survivability, and if they get bogged down, they're in trouble. Plus, they have no sources of healing whatsoever. Great start for the undead, though. Chaos Dwarf Flank just utterly collapsed, and most of their range units were immediately gobbled up. They'll try to counteract the Flaming Sword of Ruin over on the other side. Crabs are not going to be around for too long, but while they are alive, they're going to cause a lot of problems for the Chaos Dwarf Blunder Buses, and those Night Terrors in the center just got back from an Avicii Rave, and they're all lazzed up, causing terror to any Chaos Dwarf infantry they can get their hands on. Rather, they're big, shiny, scary claws and hanging intestines. Blazing Beards of Bazarat got a nice nap to nade into the back of their formation, though killing off a whole bunch of deckhands. The Skullcracker went right for the cannons because he wants those dead. I think that's a pretty logical choice for it right now. It can't really fight Morgul's. It doesn't want to. It definitely cannot take on Morgul Haunters, so keep it on the periphery. Keep it dealing with the artillery in the rear. Shut down those cannons while the Granite Guard deal with the other one, and it's a pretty good choice. Balance Bar at the moment is in favor of the Vampire Coast. Scurvy Dogs were held in reserve until the lines opened up and broke down. Nice little snipe coming in from Zeth and the Black, though, and Feebling Foe and the Sadistic Snare. That'll take the Morgul Haunters melee defense down to zero and melee attack down to 24. So nice attempt to take it out, but already supported by the Sirens and by Slaster Direfin, that will force Zeth and the Black away. Morgul Haunters are really not terrible duelists. They do have low MD, Tide Cult here some of these Orc Laborers, but they hit really hard and they attack really fast. They have a ton of mass, so they'll stagger something like a Lamassu a decent amount of times, especially if it gets attacked in the rear or flank. Flaming Sword of Ruin, looking to turn the tide for the Chaos Dwarf melee infantry moving in alongside Zath and the Black, who is already down to half HP, taking more damage from the cannons and perhaps from the Morgul Haunters than I would have expected thus far, but Remember, the further this gets into the battle, the more ward save he'll have access to whenever he activates his special armor. And now the Vampire Coast is going to utilize one of their most effective tools, their extra mobility. They can effectively run circles around the Drassar Empire, besides perhaps the Skullcracker and Zatan the Black on his Lama Sioux. So they'll retreat and look for a round two, and this time, as Zatan the Black goes in to deal with the Morgul Haunter, He'll attempt to escape, but look how fast that thing is able to disengage, then re-engage. And multiple times here, Zatan will try to take flight, and multiple times he will get gooned out, smacked in the ass, and take a whole bunch of damage from those Haunters. So I think at this point he realizes he really doesn't want to take on a Morgul Haunter solo. It's not that he can't beat it 1v1, because he certainly can, but if he has to run away because other stuff is coming, then he gets slowed down by that chilling aura, and then stuff like this happens. Multiple summons, Sirene charges, and an overwhelming assault basically out of nowhere starting to run over those Granite Garden. That is a perfect combination 
for the Vampire Coast against Armored Infantry. Crabs to give them some additional mass and armor piercing, Sirenes to give them that charmed contact effect and lower their MA, and then you've got these Morgul Haunters that are just incredible for slicing their way through infantry. Crazy animations on them, definitely one of the most horrific models in the entire trilogy. They've always been way bigger than I expected. I remember when the Vampire Coast DLC first dropped, I was shocked at how massive these Wendigos are with their floppy jaws, and they are absolutely ripping apart this Chaos Dwarf infantry, who, yeah, on paper, you'd be like, man, I, they should have brought bull centaurs with the great weapons, right? But those cannons could have really messed them up, and they would have played a lot higher and tighter around that artillery if it had mattered, but they realized very early on that there's nothing for the cannons to shoot at, so defending them wasn't really an important proposition. So the Skullcracker is actually still completely safe, very healthy and coming over to re reinforce, and this is that second power spike the Vampire Coast are dealing with. Once those crabs disintegrate, perhaps the Dawi Zar can drag this one back, but they are running out of bodies here. Obviously, their slaves are no longer around. Song of Enthrallment from Celestra Dyerfin and her Tide Call start clearing out some of this infantry, and every time Zatan has landed, he has just gotten pooped on. That's the reality of it. His stats from that Song of Enthrallment are severely limited, Morgul Haunters, Chilling Aura them, Frostbite them. It is very difficult for him to escape here. It looks like he's just barely going to be able to, but he's on slivers of HP and as the Night Terrors and the Sirens make their way over, this is pretty well in hand for the Vampire Coast. And yet again, we are seeing the power of that Morgul Rush and what it can do to a bunch of stunty little grudge gnomes. And obviously a big part of this is them not knowing what your build is. And that is one of those things that you should always think about when you're doing analysis on a game after the fact is, should they have been able to predict what your build was going to be? And if so, did they attempt to counteract it at all? And I think one unit of Great Weapon Bull Centaurs in this battle for the Chaos Dwarfs would have certainly helped a lot, and they could have kept that in the trees and hidden from the cannons for a lot of the battle. But there's no reason to expect this many monsters for the Vampire Coast, especially when so many players think the best build for them is to sit back and just shoot with their gun lines, and that is the strength of the Vampire Coast, but quite a few of these factions in Immortal Empires are versatile and have a myriad of ways to beat you, and in this case, even though I think Lamasu is actually quite a good choice here, we're seeing its power right now fighting the Sirenes on slivers of HP, able to cut through them pretty effectively because of its magical attacks and Sorceress Miasma. Every time Zatan tried to goon out a Morgul Haunter, he got punished really heavily, and that is one of the dangers of flyers against a chilling aura, frostbite attacking type of unit. Haunters are very good duelists, and the Reforge will try to keep the Skullcracker alive. The Chaos Dwarf Sorcerer and the tank train automobile of doom, all of it is going to crumble out here, and the Vampire Coast is going to take this battlefield. Really impressed with how the Morgul's function in this game, and I think this was a case of the Chaos Dwarf army obviously not even remotely being equipped to deal with what the Morgul Rush offered, but that is why you're typically not going to see a build like this one attempt to defeat an opponent five or six times in a row. Once they know what the gimmick is, they can game plan for it a lot easier, but if, say you're in a tournament, right, in a land battle tournament, and you want to catch your opponent off guard at the start, very few people are going to suspect this kind of play from you, and then you can switch it back into the more traditional type of Vampire Coast style, or outright just switch to a new fashion. No real reason to play Vampire Coast multiple times in a row. In the long run, it would not shock me at all if Chaos Dwarf armies find a good way to counter the Vampire Coast. We already know that Dwarf's Vampire Coast is one of the worst matchups in the game for the Coast. Dwarfs have an incredibly big advantage, both in Dom and in land battle against them. But on certain maps, even with their missile resistance, and just considering how slow bull sensors are, I think that running into Carinade Fire could get pretty ugly for them. And that Chilling Aura stacked on top with their 62 base speed might make it not quite so palatable. Yes, in general, I'd say Bull Centaurs are a great counter to Morgul Haunters and Morgul's. But the reality is, and we started to see it, even though Bull Centaurs are an incredibly good unit, they can get dragged down to the muck. They can get slowed. They can get imbued with all kinds of debuffs. And when that happens, they don't have incredible base stats themselves to really power through. So 
I'm going to be very curious to see what people do with Chaos Force to try to counter the Vampire Coast and how this particular matchup ends up going. It's very interesting because there are a lot of ways, I think, for both factions to play it. But in this one, the Morgul Haunter and Morgul Rush really did kind of overpower the Chaos Dwarfs. And I think moving forward, I want to see how people respond and try to game plan for that while not going all in. Because if you go all in to counter a Morgul Rush and you end up just seeing a bunch of shooting, then you might be in trouble there too.